Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Port of Iron Freebie Show. We're on Series 2, Episode 3. Mm-hmm. And... No, 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 no. What? We're in Season 2, Episode 3. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an American TV show. I just, just I'm just trying a... to get over salutations. What, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it mixed it up this week. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. We are we are back with season two, episode three of the preview show, and Don't have I'm again. going. And <laughs> what? What? Did he do it again? Yeah, seasoned. <laughs> I originally said series. I got told no, and now I'm getting battered for saying season. Well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> you can't say season. Neil, it's your show, mate. It's your show. It's your show. Carry on. Right. Welcome back. To the Port of Iron preview show. Yeah. <laughs> Series two, episode three. <laughs> and I'm joined by two ungrateful sods, Dave Wiggins and Chris Shower. <laughs> How are you, team, folks? Doing very well. Doing very okay. well. Good Listen, to see you. Thanks. Thanks for having me on again, guys. I, uh, I went to the barber today, Neil. And whilst my son asked for the Jack Grealish again, I asked for the Neil Campbell. So this is what happened. I was going to say, you're looking nice and dapper today, like, but yeah, not bad. Not yeah, bad. Shout, shout out to Jane Wiley, wife of Portadown legendary supporter Johnny Wiley. There you go. Hmm, excellent. Well, here, let's have plenty to, to chat about on today's show. So we'll get straight into it. Chris, we'll start with yourself then. Portadown on Saturday there, played Larn, the, the big game at Shamrock Park there, which unfortunately Portadown came up short and lost 3-2. Bit of controversy at the end, which I'm sure we'll, we'll get to. Um, but, you know, seeing that this is a completely unbiased panel tonight, um, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll like to hear your thoughts on what happened. So, Chris, oh, I'll, I'll wait with it. <laughs> oh, you come to me first, right? Uh I'm still not over it, I have to say. So uh, that's going to be messy. Very, well, let, let's call it frustrating, shall we? That's probably the nicest way that, that we could phrase that one. Um, frustrating in a dip, lot of different ways, probably, because I thought I wasn't blown away by Lauren. I didn't expect to be blown away by Lauren early in the season. So it's a good time to be playing them, as you say, as they would often say, because they haven't hit their stride yet and they're still trying to work on patterns and they probably don't know what their strongest team is as well. So it's a good time to play them. I thought we played pretty well, but could have played a lot better probably as well. Certainly in the first half, first half we had we had enough of the ball, I thought, but we didn't do enough with it really. And soft underbelly caught caught us a couple of times, and then you know the heads could go down. So it was frustrating in that sense in the first half. But fair play to the lads. They you know they they regrouped at halftime. I think. The manager probably had a lot to, to do with that by getting stuck into them in the in the changing room because they come out second half and they, they give it a go and that's all you want, really. You want to be like if you're gonna get beat by these teams, at least have a go while you're doing it. So I thought second half much better. We were coming, you know, we were coming into the game where we're looking like, you know, we've got a, a chance, certainly when we pulled it back to two one, chance of getting back on level terms if we could. And then of course. Um, the goal that shouldn't have been a goal kills us, really. Um, albeit we went up the other end and, and pulled another one back. Um, and you can never say that it, we, you know, it denied us a point or anything like that, because obviously we were still two one down at the time. But definitely knocked the stuffing out of us, didn't it? And um, give them the clear blue water that they needed. So frustration was um, the word for me when I was leaving Shamrock Park on Saturday. Definitely. Definitely felt like um, could have got something with a, if things had been slightly different. Yeah, no, I think you're you're completely right there. I, I think um, a lot of there were a lot of predictions in the media and stuff that were saying that thought Port of were just going to get you know swatted aside by Lauren. And um, I think you know, obviously you know as you say you know that the third goal which was. Offside in my like, and that that killed it off. But I think Porter down at that stage, were obviously, were given a, a good account themselves. And um, it would have been tremendous to, to, to obviously got a late equaliser. Unfortunately, it didn't come. And um, Dave, what, what are your thoughts on the game? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Chris and say frustration. Um, the Lauren first goal stood off them, basically a free header when, um, well, it was it was big Oren Jackson really, I think, and uh, he's obviously new into the league. He didn't play a whole lot pre-season, maybe just getting up to fitness and getting up to match sharpness and all that kind of thing, but I think you're taught at least let the player know you're there, you know, put your chest into him, give him a little nudge, whatever it is, and um, he had a free header for the goal, essentially. Um, their second goal, Randall, was it? The, yeah. the, the worldly chip that everybody's talking about. I think that was a dink to the back post, to be perfectly honest. He looked embarrassed at himself, and uh, I'll never give him credit for that goal as chipping the keeper anyway. Um, so first half, while we, while we tried... Um, yeah, I thought the second half was much better. I do, I do feel like it denied us a point. I feel like our second goal was the equaliser, you know, and uh, I don't know, everybody in, in the stadium thought Lawrence's third goal was offside. Our coaches, our substitutes, the manager, the kit manager, everybody was up having a go at the lines, man, and the player was clearly in front when he took the shot. Now, the goalkeeper's got a bit of a hand to it, and maybe that's distracted the linesman in some kind of way. Like, you can't be offside if it comes off the opposing team. But when the shot, when the first shot is taken, he's standing in an offside position, he picks up the ball and sticks it in the back of the net. So it's clearly an offside goal. Everybody's absolutely raging. Um, words are exchanged in the way off and all that kind of stuff. And what's frustrating about that is then later on, half an hour later, you know, the club receive an apology from Lee Tavender saying, yeah, we reviewed it. It was clearly offside, which is fair enough for him to say that. But, you know, get it right. It's, it was clear as day, like really clear as day. Um, but there's no, there's no medication for them either because it wasn't even, it wasn't even as if it was cluttered. It wasn't as if there was a load of bodies in the yeah. way. Like, it was clear. It was obvious. It was clear as day. It was a good yard in front. And uh, there's a, a former Glenavon captain from the 90s called Duncan Larry, who he was an, a family friend when I was younger. And of course, when Portadown get beaten, he's the first one in the Twitter DMs. You know, even though his first team was Portadown as a teenager, he, he likes to come on and give me a bit of stick. And he was sort of suggesting that, you know, the way, you know we've got four full-time teams in the league now. He was saying, you know, if you want the quality to be good, maybe the referees should be full-time as well which is something to think about for the future. But at the end of the day, the referees earn very good money for part-timeness. Um, and you don't have to be full-time to know the difference between offside and not offside. So that, that's a really frustrating thing. It happens in football. It'll happen Lauren at some stage during the season. But when you're where we are, you're scraping for every point. Um I was disappointed that we didn't come away with a point then uh, on Saturday, really. Um, but I you know, the five, the, you know, even if we've been working five days a week on studying offsides, they still, they still wouldn't have got that. You know, that, <laughs> that you, you don't need that. A kid could have, you know, honestly, a child, the kids, the ball boys were jumping up and down about it as well. They, everybody knew, everybody knew it was offside apart from, apart from the linesman and the, the referee and the referees going by what the linesman said as well. So, yeah. He blamed, he blamed Delano, and rightly so. It was his mistake. So, um, But listen, what do you do? You, you go to yourself, listen, we played well in the second half. Rory Crossgreen got a nice lob goal. Big shout out to the main man, Greg Hall, for yeah. nutmegging the goalkeeper with a volley at the back post. And <laughs> uh, that's what you want your... Was he playing left back or right back? Left back? That's what you want your left back doing, coming in late at the back post. So um, that was great as well. So we played well in the second half. We defended really well. There was there was there was a moment where I think Doherty saved one, and then Adam McCallum cleared one off the head with his head, and then his foot all within like ten seconds of each other. And uh, we need the like of him and Paul Finnegan. That's that's bread and butter for them. They just throw their heads and their bodies in all of those and. That'll come good for us. That'll that'll save us points this season. And uh, 
yeah, I thought in the second half we were really good. It looks good moving forward. But overall, it was frustrating um, with that mistake that the officials made. Chris, uh, Portadown have obviously drawn against Glenavon. We got beat away to Crusaders and then we've lost at home to Larn there as well. But Linfield coming here as well. What do you make so far? I know obviously the results, it, it obviously doesn't make for good reading, but considering they've played, like, you know, Glenavon's are local Derby and then Crusaders and Larn are obviously both in the, you know, the top six. Would you be too disheartened at the minute? What, what, what are your thoughts at, the, at this moment of time? No, no, I wouldn't be too disheartened. The Crusaders one would knock the heart out of you a wee bit because of the manner of that one. Although it seemed a bit predictable given the way it happened last season as well when we went up there. Um, but Glenavon felt like a defeat in the manner of it to me anyway. It felt obviously the, the way we'd scored so late, you think you'd won it. And then it felt like, again, leaving the stadium, that felt like a defeat. And Saturday felt you know, obviously it was a defeat, but it felt like a frustrating one because it was there for the taking for us as well, I think, a point. So I think there's definitely, you have to take the positives, don't you? You know, it's a tough league, as we've always said, and we know when it's getting harder every season. So, you know, you have to t- you have to look at the positives, and there has been plenty of positives there. I think definitely on Saturday, as Dave says, the defensive performance was was really encouraging, the way they... The way they um, Backs to the wall, and they're going to have to play like that in quite a few games. Let's be honest; they're going to we're going to need that defensive solidity there as much as we possibly can. So at least we saw that, and that's something to build on. I like to see us carry a bit more of a threat when we go forward. Um, feels like Lee's trying to do the work of three men up there at times, um, so it'd be it'd be good to get a bit of support up there for him. But there's definitely been positives in there, so you know there's a long, long way to go as as um, as you know, so you know, we could could we have, could we be sitting here with maybe four points rather than one? Yeah, I think we I think we could. I think we probably should. But um, the grand scheme of things, you have to be you know content and and look at the the, the glimmers of hope that we have there. Yeah. 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 No, I I couldn't agree. Um, with you anymore um, I think you're 100% um, I wouldn't be getting too disheartened at the minute either because like I said I don't think I know the Crus- we talked about it last week the Crusaders game it turned into a bit of a hammer in the end but I don't think it was a 4-0 game but like, like the repeat fair and square but the Glenavon game there's plenty of positives obviously Lauren and Saturday there you know Lauren are a good side like um, and you know that they, they, they didn't give up and you know they ran it right until the death like but we'll move on then from the Lauren game um, Dave, on Tuesday there, we played uh, Dollingstown in the Mid-Ulster Cup, um, 2-0 victory, and um, a good run-out for a lot of the promising youngsters coming through. What are your thoughts on, on that game? And we've now got a quarter-final to look forward to against Warren Point. Yeah, I, yeah, we're in the quarter-final of the Mid-Ulster Cup. It's been a while since we've been that far in the Mid-Ulster Cup, so that's that's good. Um, no, I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, I'm Listen, I'm going to say this, and I genuinely mean it. I enjoyed Tuesday nights much better than watching Northern Ireland on Wednesday night, to be perfectly honest, you know. Um, I just love getting to Shamrock Park, and it was just, it was a really interesting matchup, you know. I sort of went into it thinking, you know, um, Matthew picked a team full of under-20s, and when I say under-20s, it was 15-year-olds in the squad, you know what I mean? Um, and 16 and 17 and 18-year-olds. And they're coming up against a Dollingstown team who, granted, are just promoted to the Division 2 below us. But you're talking about players in that squad, like players with Irish League experience, Davy McCullough, Gary Liggett, um, your boy McCabe, who was up front for Newry. Um, there's probably a couple of others. Nathan McConnell was playing left back, who was with us in the first team early in his career. Um Daniel Gordon, who's who's a really good player, um, who played played for our reserve team for a long time and played at the Anna and is now at Dollingstown. So uh, Jay Gardner, who Niall Curry signed at, at one stage. So you were coming up there against players with experience, um, you know, versus a load of young lads who are just up and coming, bags of energy and enthusiasm and wanting to prove themselves. So I do like that kind of match where you know, it's an interesting matchup. And to be fair, you know, we won 2-0. Um, the boys played really, really well. 
to me, the difference was two set pieces from Sam Ward. So Sam Ward was playing, Adam Sally was playing, um, and Jethrin Barr was playing as well. So the two set pieces, um, McCrory, young lad, scored a header at the back post from a Sam Ward free kick. And then Harry Murphy scored a header in the box from a Sam Ward corner as well. And to be fair, Sam's deliveries were really good all night. And there were plenty of them. As his, we never mentioned, the a whisker away from scoring a lovely free kick against Lauren on Saturday when he came on as well. Sure. Um, so Tuesday night, yeah, the, the, the young boys did really well. I thought Jethro Barr, he, him and Doherty are going to, fight it out for the number one jersey at, at Portadown, both good goalkeepers. Um, Jethren didn't have a wild pile of saves to make. His kicking looks good, and what he did do was he came off his line quickly and he smothered a couple of chances that Dollingstown had. Dollingstown did get in and they created opportunities, maybe five or six of them, but just didn't have that killer edge to put them away, and we did take our chances. But when you look at that match, you know, you've... Tommy Smith and Harry Murphy in the center of defense. Um, the lad, the lad Wood with the curly hair and the hairband, center midfield. He looks a great player. You know, he's tall, strong. He, he he's box to box. He moves the ball well in midfield. Um, Reese Jordan was playing. Sam Glenfield was playing up front on his own. I think, if I'm not wrong, he's 16. And the ball, you know, he played with his back to goal, ball into his feet. Very strong, held it up well. Um, and just listen, there's there's other young lads there whose names I haven't mentioned, but I just thought from one to eleven, and the substitutes he came on did really well. Um, Joe Williamson came on late, who's Trevor Williamson's young lad, got up and down the right wing a few times, uh, very fast, showed good skill. Um, got one late cross in that another substitute, Isaac Baird. Um, sort of tried to get ahead on. It was like a half opportunity. So I, I was really excited by it. Um, the boys did really well. And um, obviously it's, it's what we're working towards, you know, building the, building the youth structure and the academy and producing those players. And the Middle Street Cup, while it is a senior competition, it's not overly important to supporters. And, you know, it's not overly important to the first team. Um, it used to be feel like almost like a wee end of season trophy, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a really good opportunity to give those young boys a chance. And I think, as Matthew said in his post match interview, to come in early, go through the full setup before a senior match, go out, warm up, come back in, have a talk, and come out and be applauded out onto the pitch. So all of that experience is really good for those young lads. And I'm sure in October when we play Warren Point at home in the quarter final, um, <laughs> it'll be another great opportunity for them as well. And I hope the manager just sticks with them and gives them a good go at it. Um, I don't know what sort of team Warren Point will produce that night. Uh, you know, I imagine they'll play a stronger team than we do. So those those young see those young lads have nothing to fear. They just go out there. And flip, they're bigger and stronger than I ever was in life at 15, 16, 17 years old. And they're fast and they're, you know, they were really good. But Dollingstown, to be fair to the Isle boys there, they kept going to the end and they did, they did create opportunities, but just didn't quite get their goals. So, yeah. I am going to ask for a round of applause to be dubbed in there because that is without doubt the most in-depth and best match report I have ever heard <laughs> in my life. Um, it was actually good. It was good fun. We um, there was a there was a nice little support at the match. You know, I imagine when you play the young lads too. You know, they're making their senior debuts essentially, senior debuts. You know, so there was friends and families there, and I suppose for the Dollingstown players, they're playing against one of the top teams in the country, so they had lots of family and friends out as well. Um, and we we put the match out on our YouTube channel for free as well. Obviously, that was announced quite late because we wanted whoever wanted to come to the game to come to the game. So I think there was, there was like 1,400 views of that as well. So uh, Aaron Moffat, the former Dollingstown captain and player of 13 years, came on to co-commentary. 
He's uh, the brother-in-law of our coach, Chris Wright. So he came on, did a bit of commentary for the first time. Um, obviously, great knowledge of the Dollingstown team, and it was nice to have him on as well. So an enjoyable night. Um, didn't get to sing Sweet Caroline as loud, as loud as we did on Wednesday night at Windsor Park, but, you know, it was enjoyable. Now, now, careful, careful. You might oh, have sorry, to sorry I don't want to annoy the England supporters, do you? You, you, you don't want to annoy. You don't want to annoy the the Green and White Army. They might, you know, get offended there if you start singing that. You know, it's it's their song. It's our song. That's you know, true. it wins your part. You know, careful, careful. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, as Dave's already pointed out there, um, YouTube sensation Dave Wiggins, may I add, uh, as he's already pointed out there that uh, yeah, what, what do they do? What do they do? Oh, look, no, on commentary, well, just I was like, have you seen footage of me on YouTube somewhere? <laughs> now we're going to search after this, yeah. Um, Chris, as Dave's rightly pointed out there, Porter Darren, have quite a few f- fantastic young players coming through. Is there anyone in particular that's caught your eye so far? There have been quite a few, actually. It's good that they're getting an opportunity to play at Shermark Park. And, it, you know, for them, that's a game that, that does mean a lot. And, you know, cup competitions, that's the idea of it, to try and give these players an opportunity to show what they can do and and um, soak up a bit of the what it's like to be playing in the first team. So there's been there's been a lot. I was interested to, to see how um, Jethro and Barr got on the other night because, I, you know, I do think the goalkeeping situation is um, an interesting one because Harry's done nothing wrong in my eyes. I think he's he's been really really good and again Saturday he was pretty strong as well so how do you see that what was your verdict on Dave on Tuesday Jethro do you think um, think it's going to be a close one between the two of them I do and I was going to say you know the fellas come to Northern Ireland from South Africa to play football Mm. but then Doherty drives I think from Donegal to Portadown to play football as well so both those get listen it, it's good for the squad. It's good. They're good. They'll, it'll be good. They'll be good for each other. To be perfectly honest, yeah. Um, pushing each other on, trying to keep their levels sharp. And when Simon Hunter, the goalkeeper coach, is working with them, you know he's got two really good goalkeepers to work with, and one or two other slightly younger goalkeepers are floating on the on the fringes of that squad as well. Um, I think the the lad who was on the bench on Tuesday night was Jack Johnson. And I was hoping for anybody who's over 35 like me, there was a nice little album out at one stage by a guy called Jack Johnson. It was a wee one, one, one album wonder one summer. Do you remember it? Just like a bit of laid back guitar music. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you have a did you have some sort of pun lined up for that one if he'd come on? I was just gonna sing a Jack Johnson song. Right. So probably just probably for the best then, isn't it? God, don't say that again. They'll never bring sing, him on. I'm, I'm going to sing it now, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't so, answer your question there, Neil. To be honest, but there's uh, there's quite a few. The young fellow Jordan I uh, saw in pre-season a few times, and I thought he had a lot about him. Um, Dave mentioned the, the curly haired fellow, as we'll forever be known. Uh, Mikey, the young Mikey Wood, Mikey Wood. Yeah, he looks he looks the business as well. He's rangy, isn't he? Gets about the pitch. Um, good young player, and obviously young Glenfield. Got his, got his moment last season, didn't he, when he got, got on the Irish League as well. He's got a bright future. There's quite... Uh, the great thing is there's so many of them there that, that have bright futures and, and they're, yeah. they're playing for us, which is great. Yeah, I think uh, Tippy, Tippy mentioned too, I think when you're a young forward player or a winger, it's slightly easier to break into the first team because, you know, slightly less pressure on you whereas if you are a, maybe a central midfielder or a center back it's slightly more difficult because you know if you if you make one mistake at center back um you know you could cause a goal but you know Tommy Smith who's been in around the under 18s under 20s there for a couple of years center half young lad from Portadown did very well and Harry Murphy as well um who's from well just out the road those two lads, I think, play like they've been playing for, for quite a while, you know, and I suppose the management will have to, you know, deal with their eagerness of maybe thinking, you know, we're ready to step in here, but just, you know, blooding them in properly and giving them opportunity when it's, you know, when it's sensible to do so. Um, 
Yeah, so, I mean, the future looks bright, and that's when you watch a match, like the Mid-Ulster Cup match against Dollingstown, that's that's what you see. And I think the um, the people who were in the stadium and the people who watched on, hopefully that, that's what they got from that game. And I didn't expect us to, as, I'm not going to say easy, because Dollingstown did create opportunities, but we beat them comfortably 2-0, really. Um, and we were still pushing for the third goal towards the end, so... Um, oh, no, it was a good night all around, yeah. Well, brilliant. The future's bright. The future's red and white. So, speaking of the future, upcoming this Saturday, Portadown entertain Limfield, the champions, at Shamrock Park. Um, another difficult fixture um, in what's, well, a difficult run of fixtures <laughs> at the start of the season. So, Chris, Limfield are in town this Saturday. Um, what are your thoughts on the game coming this, this weekend? Yeah, similar to Lauren, you look, look, you know, if you're going to play them, now this this could come back to bite me big time here. But if you're going to play these teams, I'd rather play them early in the season before they've before they've found the formations that work for them, the playing the playing personnel that works for them, they get into a bit of rhythm as well. I'd rather play them at this stage. So, you know, from that point of view, I think you know the timing's not the worst. Um, and like I said, when I was on last year, the last season, when we were coming to play Linfield, treat it like a cup final. You treat it like a one-off game, don't you? It's not going to define our season when we play a Linfield. Um, but also you play with, you know, a bit of, bit of desire and hunger to go and, you know, show that we're good enough to compete at this level. Um, and if we take, if we play like we played second half on Saturday, then there's no reason why we can't really give them a good game at least. Um, you can't go in with a defeatist attitude. You have to go in believing that there's something there for you. And I do believe there is something for, the, for them when they go out on Saturday, especially at home as well, with a good support behind us, hopefully as well. Um, I think we can, I think we can, we can, we're capable of getting something, but I re- I'd like to say is go for it, you know, not not in a gung-ho, um, gung-ho manner. I'd like to say is at least have a go at them. Um, and that's what I thought we did second half on Saturday and, and we scored a couple of goals. So if we can if we can play with a bit of um bit of enthusiasm and a bit of belief as well, then you never know, do you? Um I wouldn't be I'm not fearful, put it that way. Absolutely, yeah. And um David Healy and his his assistant who assistant manager who whose name slips by me, they were at the Port of Down Lauren match on Saturday. So They'll have come to see how we're setting up and what our strengths and weaknesses are. And I'm sure we'll have given them plenty to think about, especially in the second half of that match. So it's another one to look forward to. The um, Linfield will have like 750 supporters in the wee stand behind the net. Um, so hopefully they don't score, because to be fair, when a, when a team scores, the sound out of that wee stand is tremendous. Um, and of course, they bash the back of the stand as well, the corrugated bits. Um, so, uh, just I mean, I encourage Porter Down supporters to turn out as many of them as we can. Uh, our attendances aren't aren't wonderful, you know, and and they haven't been for a few few seasons. But you'd love to think you make it four or five hundred home fans in the stand when you when Linfield are in town. Um, looking forward to it again. Nothing to fear, you know. They've like you said, Chris, playing them early in the season, they've made changes, haven't they? Um, mm-hmm. From January and over the summer, um, you know, when you when you saw Shane Lavery play international football on Wednesday night, you know, that's that's a huge miss for them. You know, his engine and I was going to say his finishing, but if he had taken his chance on Wednesday night, it might have been a different game. Um, so they're missing... They're missing Players, obviously, they've they've let some players move on, mostly to Glenavon. Um, so they're 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 just settling into the league and a whole new you know the full time setup and everything. So we we've nothing to fear. They obviously are are a top top team. They, you know they've done it for decades. They've got good players, young players, and um, I think it'll come down to will they take their chances. And could we take maybe one or two of the chances, the few chances that'll probably come our way? But again, listen, Lee will be pushing. He'll be trying to force them into mistakes. The other strikers, um, I think we'll have more more of a squad to choose from. Um, 
Michael Ruddy was sitting in front of me at the Northern Ireland match, a couple of rows, as was Claire and Dean. It was a bit of a poured down, eh? poured it down flavour uh, to the family stand on Wednesday night. But um, I think Michael, he, well, he was obviously limping in the Glenavon match and then he played against Crusaders and made it a little bit worse. And so he, he was hopefully training on Thursday night. Um, so I think we'll have quite a, a much stronger panel to choose from than we did against Lauren as well. So if, uh, if the manager and coaches know their best team or their best team that they want to put out to play Linfield, then hopefully all of those players will be available to them. Um, looking forward to it. It's a big game. You know, let's get as many Linfield fans in as we can and get them spending money. And hopefully they go home very disappointed to all the places they come from, the disgraceful ones who live in Portadown and Lurgan and Londonderry. Mm-hmm. There was two sat behind me at the Glenavon match actually, and I felt like colouring them and trying to drag them out to be honest. But again, I, it comes. I, to- I think I think those two are Linfield fans from Lurgan as well. But anyway, each to the room. Each to the room. Yeah, would, yeah. It shouldn't be allowed, should it? Um, no. Defensive, defensively, it'd be be pretty important if they could perform like they did on Saturday again. That you're, you know, as you said earlier, Dave, the backs of the wall stuff, the you know goal line clearances. The desire to keep the ball out of the net was brilliant on Saturday. Greg, Greg Hall, there was a couple of, and within seconds of each other, wasn't there, where he just threw himself in the, the way of it. And, and I think Adam McCallum's been good since he's come into the team as well this season. Mm-hmm. So we're going to need that again. We need more of the same from them, that desire to keep keep Linfield from scoring. And then if we can take our chances at the other end. Um, and as I said, I'd like to see a bit more support for Lee up there as well because he's doing the work of a lot of He's doing a lot of work up there. If we get support with him, then you know he can maybe be in the right place at the right time and take that chance for us if it comes up. Yeah, I think um, I think Tippy alluded to it, so he he said it publicly. So I suppose we can talk about it. You know, um, Oshin Connolly came on late at Seaview and did very well. And afterwards, Tippy sort of said, you know. It's, it's easy to come on when your team's 4-0 down and to try really hard. And, and I understand that. And the psychology of that is maybe part of it as well because uh, I think O'Sheen against Lauren did very, very well. I mean, he, he's still young as well and he's big and strong and um, he's quick and he's got desire. He's got good movement. Um, so potentially just pushing him up maybe close close to Lee or maybe behind him a wee bit or something like that. Um I don't know. I don't know if Oshin maybe he's maybe he's a, more of a winger, but I, you know I think he's he's a really good engine and he's strong and he can win the ball and he can do things with it as well. So um another local lad who hopefully has a good long Irish league career in front of him in a ported down shirt. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Just as you say there, Dave, about drumming up as much support as we possibly can this weekend, could you just give a shout-out to Port Down supporter Eddie McFeeders, who would have been at the game this Saturday, um, but he's recovering from an operation. He's just out of hospital there, so get well soon, Eddie, and hopefully see you at Shamrock Park very soon. Yeah, get well soon. Um. Moving on from the Linfield game, we you're speaking about cup finals, but the, the, the road to, well, will it be Windsor this year? Um, it, it begins for the Premiership teams in the Bet McLean League, Irish League Cup. Um, next week, um, on Tuesday, we, we entertain Newington at home. Chris, um, obviously the League Cup wasn't played there last season. Um, good opportunity here for Porter Down to you know, maybe go on a, on a decent cup run. I think it is, yeah. I think it's similar, it's similar to the Mid Ulster, but in terms of given the young, you know, I think the the young fellas will get a chance in this one as well. I think you'll probably see more of a a hybrid team though that plays against Newington as well, but a few more first teamers probably in there as well, because you know it's one of those competitions that you don't need to win that many games to get to the latter stages of it, really. So it's an opportunity for us. Um, you know, are we going to win the league? No, we're not going to win the league. Could we? potentially get the semi-final or final of the cup the league cup Irish cup yes I think we could 
So, you know, I'd like to see us take that seriously and, and give it a good go. Newington, Newington are notoriously difficult side to play against. They, they always find the best talent around North Belfast at that level and they always, you know, get a team that's really, really determined. So it's going to be a difficult game, no doubt about it, but it's winnable for us and I think we need to take it seriously and have a good go at them. Do you know who actually I, I plays for do you ever who? do you know who actually, do you ever remember um Gary Wark that played for us a few seasons ago? Oh yeah. He scored a haptic on Boxing Day, he plays for Nathan. That's right. Oh. He was an a way at lock all he scored a hat trick, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He plays for them. Oh, close. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, like so like I want League Cups, you know. It's different to the Mid Ulster Cup in that I think it's a competition that from the start you go out and you think we could we could go and win this competition. Like Chris said, you know, Newington are a good side, and you, you used the word hybrid, which was lovely. And uh, <laughs> the the uh, I think because you know respectfully Newington are a uh, you know if you were coming up against. Carrick Rangers in the League Cup, I would want us to put out our strongest team. But when you're coming up against Newington, yes, it's an opportunity to give some of those lads a game. But um, it's a competition I'd love to see us win again. Um, when did we win it? 2009? Yep. We've got the final in 2011 yeah. as well. Oh, don't talk about that. Still, right? Still right? <laughs> yeah, it was a disaster. <laughs> talk about beating finals. We only talk about the ones we win, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yes, I would. I would. I think you're right too. I think you win two rounds and you're in the quarter final. You just don't know what happens after that. You know, knockout matches or knockout matches. Maybe you come against a big team who maybe aren't taking it quite as seriously as you are, and before you know it, you find yourself in a final. Um, so, I would love to see us go as far as we can and play as strong a team as we can. Obviously, the leagues much more important we want to get as many points on the board as we can but you know good runs in senior cup competitions it can really help your league season as well confidence breeds confidence goals breed goals wins breed wins and I think that's what we need to put a few wins together and just try and keep winning um, so yeah that'll be a good game as well uh, under the lights at Shamrock Park we're getting to the stage that season where if it's an evening a match the lights are on from the start and maybe there's just a bit of foggy mist of an autumn night and uh, I'm sure Newington will be coming to Portadown with everything to prove no pressure you know everybody will think we should beat them so they'll come and I imagine we'll get stuck in first half an hour I'm sure there'll be plenty of big tackles and plenty of kicks and knocks and getting in our face and uh, they'll they'll think they have some kind of chance. I think when you go into a football match, you go into it thinking anything can happen here. So they'll give it a good go, but hopefully um, we'll, we'll give it a good go this season in the League Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you say, like wins breed confidence and, you know, no disrespect to Newington, but Portadown will be expected to beat them here next week. And, you um, you know, if, if, if you get through, and fingers crossed we do, um, you just never know, you know, the luck of the draw. You know, you, you might find, say, for example, like a, a Linfield gets drawn against a Glen Torn and a Larn gets a clipping ball or something, and then suddenly, you know, it just opens up in front of you. You just never know, like, so fingers was, crossed. Uh, more recently, I just think Balna Mallard win the Irish Cup final two seasons ago. So if the draw lines up for you, you can do it. Exactly. So you just you just never know. Like so, like I say, fingers crossed. And um, folks, before we split, um, I just like to say um, uh, I am actually running the London Marathon here in three weeks. Um, and as far as just generally, I do all this. It's not just you two. And um, <laughs> <laughs> are you asking um, me for money, mate? Yeah, sounds like it doesn't. <laughs> so in three weeks' time, I'm running the London Marathon. And um, I'm running it for Blood Cancer UK. Um, and um, I was just wondering if, if anyone would like to make a small donation um, to my Just Given page, um, which you can find on my social media and also um, we'll fire it up on the Ports Preview show as give, well. Give us your social media there. Uh, at Neeler C on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, very good. Um, yes, but, give me um, some money. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, 
basically um last year my uh my my partner's mother passed away after a, a long battle um with blood cancer so um i'm running the london marathon for it and uh any donation would be greatly appreciated please and thank you <laughs> good for you mate Perfect. well done how's your training going I'm, I'm going it it was going <laughs> it was actually going really really well and then um about two months ago, I pinged my hamstring, but I'm on the comeback trail, so I'm I'm back running again and stuff. So I'm I'm I'll be I'll be going over in three weeks' time here to, to give it my best shot. Like so, I thought you were going to say that the training was going well, and then you had three weddings, three weekends in a row, and then it just all went out the window. Like you know, <laughs> it is wedding season at the minute. I feel like I'm at a wedding every other week at the minute. Flip sick. Um, Absolutely, give, you shouldn't be so popular. The... That's what I said. Of that you shouldn't be so popular then. <laughs> Now, and I don't know if you've forgotten about this, but for the first time in a long time, I'm going to say if you aren't a subscriber to We Are Ports TV YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. How was that? Very professional. I and, mean, you, I always, yeah, and, I, and you'll get to meet the stars like Dave on YouTube. <laughs> behave yourself. Behave yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, we better go. It's getting late, like. Yeah, it is indeed. Listen, Chris, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, it's great having you again. Um, we got you give him the hat trick ball after the show because he, he's joined uh, the team. For my first ever hat trick in anything, I think. <laughs> oh, by the way, well, I, I find that surprising. We uh, we were starting, me and my son were starting with Chris and his son at the Korean pre season match. Where was that at? Moyola? Moyola, yes, Moyola, that's right. And of course, we found a wee samba goal, and we pulled the samba goal out of the side of the pitch. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and af- afterwards, Levi said, "That man's got a bit of skill." Like, so who, they, was he, who was he talking about, though? Talking about you. Uh, must have been, must be one of the subs he was referring to. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take the compliments right. when you can get them. Like. Right, good. I'll take it. Yeah, and then I'm going to have to to search your name on YouTube here as well. <laughs> you'll be you'll you'll be you'll be going home to look for a game of five aside as soon as possible now. The confidence is up there. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. I'll be wanting on the bench for Saturday. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Listen, folks, we've... thanks very much for uh for coming on board tonight. Um it's been great to speak to you both. And um, fingers crossed on Saturday, three points against Linfield. No pressure. Three points. Come on, the ports. Come on, the ports. And then hopefully beat Newington here on Tuesday night as well. Ciao for now. <laughs>